Hello, I'm James Holland and I'm a historian of the Second World War. And I'm Richard Cutland. For the past eight years I've worked for World of Tanks, but for 30 years before that I was a tank crewman with the Royal Tank Regiment. Now here at Bovington we're always being asked all manner of questions, so we thought we'd sit down and try and answer some of them. Therefore, welcome to a brand new series, How To In A Tank. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play online game World of Tanks. World of Tanks is a multiplayer PC game where you can take control of history's most powerful machines and enjoy tactical player versus player gameplay. Download the game at the link below. Use the invite code for an exclusive starter kit. Well, if there's one thing the British love, it's a good cup of tea. And as a former tank commander, I couldn't agree more. We all loved, as a crew, getting together and having a brew. And the British Army thought it was so important that from 1945 onwards, they actually put onboard brewing facilities inside the turret. So, funnily enough, in this particular episode, we're going to look at how to make tea in a tank. Now, of course, the soldiers in the First World War didn't have the relative comforts that we had on Challenger 2. <laughs> no, it's all pretty basic stuff here. But the little creature comfort you get is from the Tommy Cooker, which you're now going to try and get to work, Richard. They're ingenious, aren't they? Because they're tiny and you've got, you, so you take the lid off, which you've done, you pierce this and it's just, it's just kind of some flammable gel. Then you've got your mess tin, two enamel mugs, carnation milk. And of course you want carnation milk because of course that's what keeps it, you know, from going off. Tinned milk, plenty of sugar, bag of tea, pour it all together and you're good to go. And this night's really that sounded like, oh, it, has it, it, has it has lit, it has lit. It's go. absolutely lit, that's amazing. Okay, so we've got to get this. <laughs> okay, it's fine, it's fine. Um, now let's just hope that the soldiers in the First World War were a lot better doing this than we were. Okay, it, let's just. <laughs> it might not be the best for health and safety, but you know, <laughs> being in the Western Front's not great for health and safety. Let's true, face yeah, it. Very true. Are oh, you going to put it straight, straight into the into pot? The Dearie into me, the pot. look at me. Look at that. Oh, look at the hue yeah. that is turning. That's going to be absolutely a thing of wonder. That looks delicious already, James. The steam's coming off it. It's beginning to bubble. It's time to pour it in. A little bit for me, a little bit for you. Drop of milk for you. I'm gonna put the lid back on. So this is how you do, you just get rid of it like that, boom. And obviously we need a bit of sugar, don't we? Two for me, please. Two for you. I can, nice tell, you, sweet. can tell you are in the army. <laughs> it's like custard. Yeah, 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 no. It's, it's, not, it's not milk as you and I would normally know it. And we've both got... There you go, James, cheers. A Looks incredibly bread. tasty. Mmm. <laughs> actually, I think I, I actually have that, that's that's hitting the spot for me. I'm absolutely fine with that. It's actually better than I was anticipating. Oh, really? Yeah. Tea first really comes to, to Britain in the 18th century, and and really takes a hold. And by the 19th century, it's absolutely kind of part of the daily ritual. I mean, what you've got to remember with the First World War is is that you know a lot of the the um, the water was coming from kind of sort of cans that have been cleaned up by the use of chlorine or by petrol so the water you're getting is pretty ropey it's obviously one of the reasons why you want to kind of, sort of boil it up as much as you possibly can so whatever your tea tastes like it's going to have that kind of residual kind of flavor of chlorine or fuel funny enough you know some british soldiers did have thermos flasks as well which of course ironically were designed and built by the germans how do you get enough heat to make a brew very quickly and then get rid of it again really quickly the genius about this is you can light it you know we, we've lit this in a in a gale um you immediately put it out again and, and put it in your back pocket and you, and you have a sack and off you go, don't you? And do you think, I mean, was every single soldier issue one of these? No, they weren't. They weren't standard issue, actually, which is, which is weird because they, they flipping well should have been. I mean, they're absolutely amazing. Um, but the problem is it's less sort of, you know, I mean, it doesn't give off much of a flame, does it? So, which is good from a tactical scenario, from a tactical point of view. Yeah, um, but you just don't want to be kind of faffing around trying to sort of light fires with bits of soggy wood, do you? Yeah, absolutely. You just, you just yeah. want instant heat, switch it off again. The interesting thing about the tank, though, is, you know, inside there, I mean, that is brutal because the fumes inside this thing are just toxic in the extreme. So for obvious reasons, you don't really want to be kind of setting light to a Tommy cooker 
inside it. But of course, even today, I mean, you know, soldiers are soldiers, and I guarantee you, no matter what anybody says or anything you read, that at some stages they would brew up inside that vehicle. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. And I think people underestimate the importance of it. I mean, even today, when we run operations, there is it is so critical. It's a you all get together as a crew, you sit down, and you have a couple of seconds or a, a few minutes, hopefully, off from everything that's going on, all the chaos, yep. uh, and you can sit down and actually have a nice hot cup of tea. I mean, even in Iraq, where it was baking hot, of course, we would still be drinking hot brews. It's a very British thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. So, that's the First World War. Now, World War II and the Sherman tank. Let's go. So we've left the First World War behind, and now we're on to the Second World War. And there were a number of different ways in which you could brew up in World War II. You could have your primer stove, you could make your own fire, or you could have a Benghazi burner, which is what we've gone for here. So you pour it in the fuel, light the match, and just drop it in, Richard. There we go. You all right? Still got eyebrows? Still got eyebrows. Here's our mess tin with water. Do you know the great thing about this is though, James, is also gives you a bit of visual. Like unlike the Tommy cooker that we had before, this is fantastic. And soldiers like you nothing can sit more. around it. Can't yeah, you? absolutely. It's a right. proper campfire. Now during the Second World War, you still have loose tea, you still have your carnation milk, but you also had composite tea. And I have to be said, you know, it wasn't as uh, it wasn't as popular as ordinary tea. I'm assuming that's a, that's a mixture of it all then. It's all together. Yeah. It's a one-stop shop. Yeah, it certainly is. And it looks absolutely disgusting. It looks already. horrible, doesn't it? Look at that. So that is <laughs> that is dried tea, dried milk. Oh God, it's got horrible little bits in it. I'll tell you what, where this is where you really do need your sugar as well. Stir it all in. I've got to say that does look absolutely gopping. So we've also got some boiled sweets here, and this is the story from Kent Out. A Kent Out was in the Northamptonshire Yeomanry, um, served in Normandy and beyond, and he's a lovely fellow. He's an absolutely top bloke. But he used to say that he often used to put a boiled sweet in there as well. Now, I'm going to... Gee, even today we get boiled sweets in Dear. ration packs, but I've never heard of it being put in tea before. So it must have been pretty hefty on uh, water, though, James. I mean, it takes a lot of water to make a cup of tea all the time, and uh, yeah, there's only a limited amount of water that you actually carry on a vehicle. And obviously, the, the important thing is making sure that you keep the coolant system topped up as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, water's always a problem. I mean, less so, obviously, in, in Northwest Europe, where you've got lots of rivers and all the rest of it. But yeah, you know, in the desert, it's, a, it's an absolute nightmare. One of the things they used to do in the desert, they used to put, um, because the, the water bowsers were kind of very obvious, they look like little tankers, yeah, you know, yeah. with c cylinders on the back, you know, giant cylinders on the back. So what they used to do was put a canvas cover over it and quite often put a red cross on top as well, just to kind of really kind of prove the point. And again, you have that whole thing that you absolutely had in the First World War of, you, you know, your water tasted of petrol, it tasted of chlorine, it was all pretty disgusting, really. And I can't emphasise enough how disgusting that actually It doesn't look great, does it? But we're going we're gonna <laughs> to sample it now. I'm going to give you a little bit anyway, Richard. I'm looking forward to this. Um, but actually, one thing that's very interesting, that does look properly hot, though. Thank you very much. Uh, one thing that's very oh, interesting man. is in 1942, it's probably the nadir of, of, of the British Army's fortunes, in, certainly in the war in the West, where they've lost the Gazala battles, they've just had to kind of flee from Tobruk in June 1942, and they're in full retreat back to the Alamein line. And morale is absolutely rock bottom at this moment. And I heard it said that at that moment, had it not been for the tea ration coming through, we could have easily kind of thrown in the towel. I mean, that is how important tea was to the British Tommy. And I can appreciate that, you know, it sounds amazing. I mean, the amount of times that we have been super cold, absolutely drenched to the skin on exercise or operations, and to have something like this is just incredible. And of course, you can't underestimate the fact that, you know, it may seem nice to sit around a fire with a cup of tea, but it's also incredibly oh. good for the crew. It makes you perform better, it wakens you up a bit. Yep. It's, um, you know, it's really, oh, really important. Anyway, I'm going to try this tea. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's, it's not quite as bad as it looks. <laughs> I'll tell you what it tastes of. You know, about sort of 15, 20 years ago, you, you know, if you were going to a public place, you need, you'd have your sort of 50p and you'd have a little sort of horrible little plastic cup of tea that would come out of the machine. That's what this tastes like. And of course, there's a reason why it tastes like that, because that's exactly what it is, isn't it? <laughs> I have to realize. say, though, with, with stacks of sugar, it's still pretty good. And it's, uh, it it's all right, isn't it? It warms you up. So just as important in the Second World War as it was in the first. Absolutely. 
And so we're inside the turret, Challenger yeah. 1 turret, uh, second tank that I served on. Um, so welcome, yeah. And we're here, obviously, to look at the tea-making facilities on there. Yes. Uh, and you'll notice, just to your left there, it's not actually in the right position at the moment. It should be further down. There's a bracket down there for it. Is the boiling vessel, the BV, as we referred to it as. Um, and, and the British Army loves acronyms, doesn't it? Oh, of course, absolutely. And I have to say, you ask any tank crew, and it is the singly most important piece of equipment <laughs> on the entire tank. Forget about everything. Yeah, forget about armor protection, firepower, mobility. Forget about it all. The BV is the singly most important thing. So you don't have this in a in a Russian tank or an American tank. It was the British who invented this. Now a few other countries <laughs> have actually stolen the idea, and I've seen some similar things around there, but certainly no. And again, I think you can't never underestimate the importance of crew comfort in the turret. You can see there. You know, we used to spend sometimes days inside this turret. Um, so to have that ability there to run the BV to get your hot water was fantastic. And I think it's also important to mention that, you know, it was, we, we've now seen World War One, we've now seen World War Two. but here you go, here's an item that we can have running 24-7, as long as the GUE, the generating right. unit engine, or the main engine was running, to charge, to provide power for it, and it would boil water. But of course, on top of that, it wasn't just the tea. We could put tins inside there, you could put yeah. packets of food, so it was your one-stop shop for right. absolutely everything. So using your ball in a bag kind of food? This was the thing. I mean, unless, especially on operations, you don't have time to stop and get everything out and get the cooker out and all the rest of it, so that was the thing that did everything for you, and it was an absolute lifesaver. And where you are at the moment, you're on the loader side of the fighting compartment. He was the man who was, well as being responsible for loading the main armament, doing the radios, uh, two IC of the yeah. tank, as well yeah. he was also more importantly critically responsible for making a nice cup of tea <laughs> for us all but um yeah and i think we should mention probably the thing below actually it's called the brew box believe it or not and no. surprise to prize oh, that's where you would keep inside there that's where you keep your mugs that's where you keep your tea bags and not enamel um, mugs we always 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 had china <laughs> mugs because a cup of tea just doesn't taste the same unless it's in a china mug <laughs> um, but yeah the positioning down there it yeah. wasn't left there all the time because of course what would happen was when the gun fired you can see the breach here of the main armament. Yes. If the gun fires, if you were to keep the BV in position, what happens is that little white handle down there, it's called the rammer handle, yes. would actually smash straight through there. So, of course, on operations uh, and also on range periods, it would be moved out of the way and tucked away somewhere. But what I love about this, Richard, is right next to here, we've got the thermal observation and gunnery site. Okay, that that's here. Next to it... <laughs> is the BV, your <laughs> kettle, which looks basically exactly the same. Uh, let's jump outside so it's a bit easier for everybody to see. So Richard, obviously you're kind of normally brewing up inside the turret. So how does this work? You lift it up. Yeah, so I mean, obviously getting it outside of it. I think the important thing to mention, first of all, is obviously what you would need was the power lead, which is yeah. conspicuous by its absence. Having said that though, we did have on our tank, you could get actually make yourself and it, a longer extension lead, so oh, really? theoretically you could get it outside of there. So you notice inside here there's actually an insert. Well, we used to bin these because it was just you could get more water in there and it would boil yeah. quicker. So we used yeah. to get rid of that, and there you go. And that really is as simple as it. The element inside there, yep. throw the water inside there, put the lid back on, and then wait for it to boil. And wait for it to boil, and it, it will boil when it's super clip. It doesn't whistle, but what it does do, funny you should say that though. Um, there's a bit of a obviously you get a lot of pressure built up in there, so you could tell when it was boiling nicely. You used to get steam bellowing out of the, <laughs> the, the, the top here so that's it it's as simple as that whatever era it was the facts of how really important I mean we take it quite lightheartedly but it is critical to yeah. you know a tank soldier it is there it's that great feeling it's when you're cold it's something to warm you up it's getting together as a crew um, you know it's a real necessity I cannot think of my 30 years of service on tanks what life would have been like <laughs> without having a cup of tea a BV well wow. that's a, a new one for me so now, James, having drunk all that tea, of course, we now come on to the problem of how to go to the toilet in a tank. A question I'm asked a huge amount. <laughs> well, should we leave that for another episode? If this video has gotten you in the mood for some tanking, don't forget to check out World of Tanks at the link below. The invite code will give you a Matilda Black Prince, seven days of premium account, and a T3485M rental. Valid for new players only. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and please do subscribe to the Tank Museum's channel on YouTube and support us on Patreon so that we can make even more videos like this.